Welcome to Sunbeam Alpine Tiger Recreation Part 8. Now, surprisingly, one or two have says, when you're doing Part 8, Steve, well, it's here. I've decided to continue doing these right through to the build. So some of you may find it interesting, some of you may not. Now, today, or any other day because I've brought some editing software now so as you'll find some some improvements in these uh, videos maybe not but I'm learning so as we're going to talk about the front stubs so as we've got a problem with one of the stubs which you'll learn about in a little moment that there's a, a bolt uh, sheared straight off in it so as I'm going to explain now, well, I'm going to show you why it's not practical to try and weld them out. Now, I've done this for many years and had a 95 successful rate on blind holes and through holes. Now, I'm going to show you the difference between a blind hole and a through hole and why that a blind hole is easier to get out than a through hole. So I'm not sure whether you can see my little sketch on here, uh, whether it's blowed it up on your televisions, I'm not sure. But you've got a through hole with the broken bolt head, which is flush. So this is why I'm going to show you later on, we could not get it out for after God knows how many attempts. Now a through hole, for instance, on the front stub, a snapped off flush right so as you think you'll get that out easy however as the bolt has not passed all the way through and it's sort of halfway into the hub which is like 55 years old what happens it rusts at the back of it and forms a mush like a mushroom it eats into it so as normal case you'll you'll grind it off flush weld a washer on weld a, a nut which you'll see I've done, and you'll wriggle it about and it'll come out. Well, you'll find out why it didn't come out. So as the next one is the through hole where the bolt has passed all the way through. So as what you can do basically is grind the end off, weld your washer on, weld your nut, and 95% chance that that will come out. That one, 20% chance. So as that's one reason why we won't go that way and I'm showing you why now a blind hole is better if you've got a problem say for instance uh, manifold bolts uh, I've done quite a few on uh, rover heads aluminium heads uh, 3.8 uh, UNC uh, so as you'll have a blind hole uh, it's snapped off so as you weld a washer on, you weld a nut off, they transferred to it after a half a second or so. You can waggle it about with the penetration oil. 99% chance them will come out, not a problem. Never had a problem with them. So as then there's the, the situation where it's snapped in a little bit. So as you're unsure, you can actually, if you have a bit of practice at this, you can spot it with a MIG, smack in the center once you've cleaned it up and keep building it up until you can get that little MIG blob out so as you can get a washer on it and then put the, the nut on it uh, which it'll, once you've welded it like it'll send the heat through it and then wiggle and waggle it about but you might have to a couple of attempts at it. Now I hope you enjoy the next bit on the way things are going but uh, you will see why it's best to centre punch it, drill it through, save all that wasted time. So as we've cleaned the area up, there's the little bugger there, and it's it's well seized in to be honest with you. So as I, I can see this uh, going to be drilled out, uh, to be quite honest with you, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna uh, fuse it to this uh, stainless washer and then what I shall do then is I shall weld the nut on there. Hopefully there'll be a bit of strength in there, bit enough to do it. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. 
Now this is third time lucky. Uh, it's been really, really hard to get this out. We've put a bit of WD-40 on it. Uh, it's one of those, I think I've got it loose anyway. It's one of those things where it's, this was really seized in years. It's, uh, it's coming, I think, <laughs> and Christmas is. But uh, as you can see, uh, I don't want to put too much on it because it, it'll probably snap it off. So I'm just going to work that in for a bit. I'm afraid not much luck here. One, two, three, four, five. But I got five. As you can see, it's been pulling a little bit out each time. So this is a bugger. I haven't got any uh, quarter UNF taps. I've got a, a thread cleaner. Uh, that's all I've got to do. Do that. So what I've decided to do now is drill a hole in it uh, and we'll bang the MIG through it. As you can see, there's not much left in there. There's about 5 mil. I haven't even got an easy out that size. I could probably drop a Torx in it, but I might chew the edge up. So as I'm going to give this a last try. This is the penultimate last thing. And then I'll just drill it out and order a tap um, to, d to do it. Uh, as you see... Things like this are time consuming. If you was on the clock and charging by the hour, the customer would have a massive bill. We all do this for the love of it, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Well, the answer to that was it didn't go well. Uh, so, yeah, we drilled and tapped it. And um, after years of experience of, of, of getting bolts out of holes, of cat seven triple seven seven eight fives in the engine bay getting out the exhaust studs d9 d8 undercarriage bolts 99.9 .9 successful however this one beat me and probably because it wasn't a blind hole so as what happens over the years the holes fill up with crud uh, and it mushrooms the end so as, there you go we've had six good attempts of it just to prove that I couldn't do it. 50 years of crud, it's beat me. So was, we brought a US Pro set for UNF. All I've got is one quarter by, what is it, 28 UNF tap. But you can guess what's happened. Because I've welded, 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 cooled, welded, welded, it's gone very hard. So as the US Pro, no. So I was just go and order some bloody good, decent tungsten carboid taps. Uh, we've centre dotted it. We've drilled it uh, one eight uh, centre, perfect, and then gone through with the five point five, and it's tapped out beautiful. All these, these, both of these studs now are ready. They've been checked, sized, perfect, shot blast, powder coat black, and that's me off there. Bear, I've got new bearings for it. Uh, well, I'm well pleased with that now. Everything's fine, so as, like I say, proper job. Um, but I wouldn't advise anybody to buy one of these US Pro sets. Just, just get the right taps, just buy them. Buy them off eBay. Just look for quality, Presto, uh, you know... Some of German USA quality, uh, and you won't go wrong with those to be honest with you. It's tapped through great, so as all that's done now and ready, so as let's see what else uh, we can move on to as a challenge. Racks off, yes, steering racks. We've gone on to steering racks now. Uh, one mainly is. We couldn't identify the steering rack was on this uh, Tiger Alpine recreation project. Um, so I, was, I think I'm 99% sure what wreck it is. I'm just going to flip the camera now, now and show you where we are with the rack. Now the steering rack, what was, was on the Alpine was unidentified because of the way it was modified and mainly possibly because of the Ackerman angle uh, 
what we know the original Tigers uh, have a problem with Ackerman Angle, whereas one wheel's fighting the other on full lock or three quarters of the lock. Uh, this wasn't too bad when I actually road tested it. Uh, so was this steering rack, which I thought was a Ford Capri Mark II. Now, I ordered some, some gaiters, Capri Mark II, uh, which, as you can see from the original gaiter, we got a 50mm to a 12mm. And I think this was a 33 uh, to a 12 Now, I, I couldn't get none of that exactly the same as that. I've been told that the steering rack is Escort Mark One. 1970 69 70 early mark one um for the simple reason is we've uh i've had these given me off a good friend uh which are in very good condition and they're 1250 and uh 12 32 or 33 i think it is and they fit fine so as we're going to use them i've checked all the tolerances on the the rack the pinion's fine the rack's fine there's no playing it at all and it's it's nice and tight not too tight so as we're just giving it a coat of paint now we're going to pack it all with grease and then we're going to use these um second hand um gaiters what i've had given me i'm i am going to keep these because on my travels of of looking through various auto jumbles and that i might find something uh very similar but the rubber is very soft very very soft and it is perished and hold so they're now good these are a seem like a different type of rubber that they're fine they just need cleaning up so i'm going to use those those who knows they'll probably go on the top shelf for another project at least they know what those are for so this is where we are with the rack. So all we need to do now is pack it with grease, put these on, cable tie it, and then stick it up with the rest of the bits I've had uh, redone, reconditioned, powder coated, shot blasted, whatever, ready to get on to uh, the, the, the next uh, stage with this. Okay, so as it's all packed full of grease now. We've cleaned up the second hand... Um, Gators, uh, painted it, two coats of uh, Amorite Smooth Black. I'm happy with that. That can now be put up on to the uh, the rack with all the other uh, reconditioned parts. Next. Okay, back to uh, the steering uh, column support bearing. So as we've, we've done the spacer. What we needed to do, we've... Uh, board the shaft slightly and put some recesses in also this side don't know whether you can see but when it comes off you will be able to so all this now is is ready for welding i've pulled the bolts in from the other side so as he's pulled it up and i've tapped it back to the what's the name so I'm, uh, the inner arch so as i'm going to um, fully weld this now uh, so as i'll show you when i've done it we can unbolt it and that is the steering column support sorted. Okay, so as we've welded it in, uh, I don't think I've come through. <laughs> it's uh, quite thin to what I'm usually uh, normally used to. So as we're gonna just undo these bolts now. So as that's all welded in, so that should slide off now. Hopefully, nicely. Yep, and then you can see the, the insets there where the grub screws actually go in. Uh, we got to that side. Uh, these will be Loctited in as well, just to, to add a bit of more security. So as this can be now painted when I finally do everything else. Uh, we've got a piece here what's been put in before. I'm not happy with that. And then also over the top here where th there was a member there, I'm going to put a piece in there and fill that in. That's a bloody water trap if anything. 
so as I can get my fingers right in there and then obviously we're going to uh, to sort this out so as that that will sum up the uh, the steering column then so that's another job done uh, I'm happy with that well this came today head torch really pleased with it you'll have you've got to get one of these honestly uh, it's got a little little torch at the end it's sensitive absolutely brilliant for this kind of work I'm actually gonna put uh, the eBay number in my description I've had head torches before in the past and they've stuck out and I've caught my head on them ripped my, ripped my neck off etc etc but this is this is the business anyway let's get back to a thing I found out on the fr front now bodywork now then we found quite a bit of rot in this area on the joint so I was rather than recreate I don't think you can get this panel correct me if I'm wrong um, but there's no rot on this at all so as it just seems a shame for hours and hours to pull all this lot out redo it roll it etc to make it it's hours and hours and hours of fun so as as mean as the rot was just down this side of in my wisdom cut it out bent it round and i'm going to weld that from the the wheel arch side uh, and i'm going to put some filler in this side and fill it off that will all be perfect then so I was, i'm happy with that that's just another problem am amongst the car uh rot wise it's not too bad and also i found a very tiny little hole what's appeared there uh this is not bad so as i'm going to tack that from the inside and then i'll just grind into it all this then will be vac can uh, rust treatment which will turn this black and it will stop or more or less slow it right down from rusting in the near future then i can get some primer on that then uh, that's done that's that side now the other side now as you can see this side was the same as as the other side uh it's not as bad so i'm trying to get focusing it's not as bad to be honest with you uh there again this seems all sound here i'm just going to cut that out do the same with this uh, and then clean all this up then and rust treat that and then i can put put that in primer so really that's the only worst rotten bodywork i've come across on this car most of it's been done by previous owners and in all fairness they are not bad repairs apart from the doors so as while well, i'm getting on with this um i've got me the bulkhead to finish off the, the steering the inner arches and also uh what i've done to the radiator which i'll show you that now now i've opened the radiator up from the original Alpine specifications so as we can get the, the core in further that way uh, also I've cut across the top as well which I'm going to finish that off uh, with a nice piece of box section like I've, I've put in here which which is strengthened all the, the, the front off obviously you're not using the you ain't going to ever use that again with the V8 no way so as that's that's all done nicely it says it's just all rub all this lot down there's no rot under here it's just surface rust so everything could be treated i've done some of it uh and then we when we get to the arches somebody's over uh gone over mad with the the same sealant um which i'm i'm pulling some of it out uh and I shall probably uh, run a little bit, sum it in a little bit better, and then put it in the uh, primer. Uh, same with this side, I've I've just been raking it out. They've just instead of doing the seam, they've done up the seam for some unknown reason. I thought it was to hide uh, rot, uh, but uh, it, it obviously it's not that case, and we got some nastiness up here which I've got to sort out as well. So as we get in there slowly. Okay, so as you knew that 
I wasn't happy with the bulkhead because of the overlapping plate what he put on here stripped it all off and I've set it back if you can see that fact I've set it back a bit better uh, I'll just put that in primer for now obviously there's a few little bits of things we've got to uh, address on there so so it's basically that has smartened that bulkhead up and I'm really pleased with that a lot better than, than how it was and probably better than what uh, actually Jensen did back in the day but however so I was, yeah uh, we'll we'll get on with that uh, at a later episode uh, to see uh, that's all finished and inside the wings as well now also uh, as you see in that I'd put a piece of metal in here to sort these out and we had a little bit of a Oh, I thought it was a tiny little hole um, to dab it up. Well, that dab it up took quite a few dab it up to do it because it was uh, progressively going. It was quite thin, but we've we've done it. Um, so as after we've done a bit of uh, primer filling around there, that should be absolutely A1. I'm left with this. I hate bodywork uh, and welding, believe it or not. So as engine building and stuff like that and getting all the mechanics done, I'm going to be fine with that. However, uh, that should now be rubbed down, primed and sorted. And obviously we've got the, uh, the other side to do, which I'm going to do the finished product on part nine. And then with the problems, what I've had on the radiator. Well, that just about concludes part eight on the uh, tiger recreation i hope you've enjoyed it uh there'll be more to come uh there'll be a bit of editing in this one as i'm just experimenting at this stage uh i've been away for three months hence that's why it's took a while but uh we'll get back on this now and see how many more episodes we can get on youtube tube 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 i'm, I'm not i'm not going to edit that <laughs> it isn't worthy uh so i was there again Please like, subscribe. I'm trying to work my way up with this. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be more enjoyable episodes to watch. Uh, there again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Well, we've had a few radiator issues. Um, I had a radiator built, but I wasn't, uh, it wasn't not right. I'd give them templates and uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and it was still too far forward. So as it would have just, the crankshaft would have just wormed its way through it, or the water, water pump, fan, fan pulley, whatever you want to call it. So as, uh, I've had to cut a, uh, a few bits out of the, the, the tanks on the side uh, to modify it. Um, so I've just tacked it all up at the moment, and then we're going to see how it, uh, how it fits on the car. Now this is an extra 20 mil thicker on the core than the one what was on the car and what i've done i've just pushed the core so as it's further forwards rather than what they did was bring it 20 mil backwards which would have, it have just been no good at all so as uh, we'll see how that fits and if you can see just about from the front, uh, we can see where we've, we, we've flagged it on the original sunbeam without uh, cutting the body away from where the radiator went. So that's, that's, that's just nice, that is. And then we've got this uh, top, what I've put on top of the radiator just to finish it off. So as it, it traps the air, basically. So it's gonna force it all into that radiator. We're gonna do some mods, some bits of aluminium scoops uh, so as we can get full air into this, I want this to be uh, to run cool. I've almost forgot to say, I'll squeeze this into this uh, part eight, that I've had my carburetor come back uh, after a while, but that's my fault because I never paid for it and uh, had it sent out. I mean, it arrived yesterday uh, from Real Steel, who I brought the engine off. Now, they upgrade the carburetor uh, so as it goes with a blueprinted engine to guarantee the 330 horsepower so as they've 
jetted it and, and whatever. I'm just going to show you, flip the camera around now and show you uh, uh, what they've uh, they've done. Right, so as carburetors come back, uh, they've also uh, replaced all the springs uh, with the more so ones, uh, part number on there, if that's any good to anybody, and uh, a QR code. Uh, if anybody wants to put that on the uh, mobile phone, take a picture, that will give you uh, the, the exact what, what it is. Uh, and they've given me one or two bits back. Uh, obviously, what's now good. So as all I can say now is that carburetor now is all done and ready to fit. Uh, the question is when? Well, keep watching and uh, 